Okay. So I thank you again for this invitation to this speech, this seminar. So I'm glad to present you a bit my research work I'm carrying out at TPFL Switzerland and the supervision of uh, Professor Giovanni De Micheli, Sandro Carrara. And I'm here at Polito under Professor Daniel De Marchi supervision. And today I will give you some insights about uh, electrochemical sensors. I will focus more on the electronic front end interfaces and the applications we could have from these uh, sensors. And if I have time at the end, I will speak a bit about data processing tools that could be implemented at the back end. OK, so let's start. So as you may be aware of, we are living in a connected world where we have these smart devices, wearable devices that give us some information about status. Like, for example, we have some heart rate trackers in most of the smartwatches. But we could also extend these uh, wearable devices to physiology, human physiology. And uh, in this case, I'm showing you some athletes or trainers that are embedding some, a lot of these wearable devices. And uh, the goal for these uh, persons like to have some information, like how they could improve their performances, training performances, like how their body reacts to the effort when they do sports. When should they rest? When should they hydrate themselves? So to do that, we need to have some information at a biomolecular level. And this is done by monitoring some biomarkers. So for example, lactate and glucose, they are some kind of metabolites that are useful to, to know how the, the body reacts, the muscle reacts when you do a lot of effort. But, but also when we do a lot of sport, we are losing a lot of minerals like potassium, sodium, calcium. So we need to monitor this loss of mineral and uh, because to avoid losses of muscle cramping when we have a uh, huge decrease of these uh, minerals. Another, maybe not that much common thing is like for athletes to absorb some, to intake some drugs. For example, painkillers, paracetamol that could be used for to, to be more resistant to the pain when doing intensive sports but also some drugs like lithium that could be intake, intaken by some persons suffering from bipolar disorder. This is an example of drugs that could be taken. Uh, last parameter, maybe we should also be monitoring the temperature, on body temperature of the persons. So all these uh, biomarkers, they belong to different families of uh, biological compounds. They could be monitored with electrochemical biosensors. So here we leverage the thing that the, f uh, the, the thing that they are allow sensing at biomolecular level. We have the sensor in direct contact with the biological fluid, so we could have this, all this information about the, the physiology status of the person. Uh, this biosensor, they are also highly selecti selective by uh, proper functionalization. They give uh, rapid response, continuous time re measurement, and most of all, they are prone to miniaturization. We could exploit the improvements in technology to, to have smaller and smaller biosensors suitable for wearable applications. So what are the main features of our wearable system? So first we have the bo body fluid extractor from which we take out this information. It could be saliva, tear, uh, sweat mostly. And we extract this fluid non-invasively. And we have interface to that a multisensing platform an electrochemical platform that is uh, sensitive, selective to the several compounds we want to monitor. And it should be also mechanically compliant to the on-body skin. So we need to have this, uh, this platform mounted on a flexible substrate. Um, at the interface, we have uh, an electronic front end that allows to monitor all these compounds to transduce this uh, chemical reaction to the electronic signal. And the uh, features of this uh, electronic platform should be multi-channels since we are want to monitor several kind of compounds. It could be also generable purpose, programmable, and should feature some wireless connectivity to transmit this data to a monitor. Could be a, an application developed on a smart smartphone, or could be sent this data to the cloud for much better clinical accuracy from the doctor, for example. So this is a bit the the outline of this talk, I'll, I'll spend a bit of time to explain the sensing principles 
of the biosensor. I'll go through the electronic front end circuits and the system developed, their char characterization. And if I have time, I'll spend a bit of time on the data processing tools that could be implemented in a multi sensing paradigm. Okay. So first I will present you some electrical biosensor principle. So as I mentioned, we have different kind of families of uh, biological compounds and there are specific techniques according to the compounds we want to measure. We could implement some amperometric sensing, measuring a current, or we could also from different kind of sensor, like measuring some potential, some uh, open circuit potential. So first I will start with the amperometric sensing. This is used to monitor metabolites such as glucose and lactate I mentioned before, but also drugs like paracetamol or whatever exogenous compound. And the working principle here is like we have a, an electrode cell in a free electrode configuration. So we have the working electrode here is the sensing electrode that is uh, functionalized uh, to monitor s selectively the, the compound we want to measure. So basically here the cell is divided in two parts. First, the working and reference electrode. This is the voltage control part. We apply, um, let's say, uh, a known potential E cell to stimulate the cell, the wall cell. And this is done with the potential stat and uh, a waveform generator that supplies different kinds of waveforms like triangular shape, waveforms, pulses, whatever. You could implement many techniques. And the other part of the cell is this over end, this counter electrode and working electrode uh, that allows to measure to create a current path and allow to measure the current Faraday current resulting from the biological reaction, like Faradayic reaction happening at the working electrode. So depending on the potential E cell we apply to the cell, we could have different kind of response current. So one technique is coronal parametry. We apply a steady potential E cell and we measure how the current decay, how the current increases and uh, we make this correspondence between the Faraday current and the concentration of the molecule we want to measure. Other techniques, like voltammetric techniques, I presented two of them here. Cyclic voltammetry, we sweep some uh, potential uh, to the cell and we measure the current. So this is the voltammogram, the cur Faraday current against the cell potential. And here we see the how um, the analyte reacted by seeing the peak current here at the redox potential of the compound we want to measure. Uh, our technique is differential pulse voltammetry. In this case, is the differential technique. We measure the current before applying the pulses and after applying the pulses, and we could have these bell-shaped curves that is related also to the concentration of the compound we want to measure. So these are the main techniques that are implemented for sensing current. Second family of uh, molecule one we could measure ions. And this is done with uh, potassium trick sensing. So in this case, we have two, not three electrodes. So one electrode here is the ion selective electrode, ISC. It is uh, functionalized uh, selectively to, to entrap some ion, the ion we want to measure, to know the concentration of. And we measure the potential against a reference electrode that is inert, that is not reacting to the presence of this analyte. And these measurements, they are done in open circuit conditions, so we, we don't supply current to the, to the cell in this, uh, in this uh, configuration. Uh, maybe I'll skip the implementation, but what I wanted to show here is the how the ion selective electrode is uh, functioning, like we, we are coating like nanostructures and selective membranes. Also the nanostructures allow to transduce the, I, the ion to electron signal and to, to see the change of potential at the back end. Okay, so now I present you the electronic front end uh, interfaces that are coupled to this biosensor that, and allow to how to measure uh, these uh, analytes, different analytes. I present some hardware system developed. This is uh, a hardware uh, mounted on a flexible uh, substrate, Kapton based, um, for this uh, on body um, sensing. And what we have here, the main features we have two amperometric channels, two potentiometric channels. At the core of the system, we have a microcontroller unit 
a Bluetooth transceiver to send uh, related data remotely. And uh, the hardware is powered with a coin battery, 3.6 volt. And we have a uh, power consumption here, like up to 150 milliwatt. Uh, for the readout, first I will uh, show block by block, block by block. For the amperometric sensing, we have first to generate this potential to stimulate the to stimulate the cell. I don't know why there are some figures disappearing. Okay. Uh, so the waveform generator is implemented with the microcontroller micro unit. Uh, we're using the counter, the timer counter, and the DAC embedded on the microcontroller to update every time the value of the cell, depending on the on the waveform we want to apply. So in this case, in the first case, like cyclic voltammetry, we want to have these triangular waveforms. So we apply um, a staircase kind of staircase potential, like varying like uh, steadily, and you measure the current at the at the ramping edge of this uh, potential. Uh, secondly, for pulse voltammetry, we apply also these pulses uh, with some parameters here. We have the pulse amplitude, the pulse period. We could tune them, and we could have this the shape you want to stimulate the cell. Um, next, for the electrochemical cell itself. This is controlled with the potential stat done with the control amplifier CA here. Uh, with the through the high impedance feedback loop here, we control the, the potential of the each node. The reference electrode is a high high impedance node, so we don't draw current from that. So there is no the, the potential is not varying depending on the reaction happening in the cell. And in the other end, we are collecting the current through the counter electrode and working electrode path. The working electrode here is uh, virtually grounded at VCC over 2 that allows us to measure by, uh, by, uh, by, uh, by directional currents. The, uh, the current to voltage transduction is done uh, with the uh, transabundance amplifier, the simplest way to implement this um, current to voltage uh, conversion. And we could tune the gain of this uh, feedback, uh, feedback resistor uh, depending on the, the concentration and the, the compound we want to measure. Typically, it's on kilo ohm uh, values. Last stage of this uh, reading block, we have some filtering for and uh, some DC adjustment to profit the wall dynamic range of the ADC. For the potential metric measurements, as I mentioned, it's like uh, open circuit measurement technique. So in this case, we need uh, voltage buffers with really high uh, input impedance so that we could uh, we don't um, draw current to the cell. So typically, this is done with uh, um, voltage buffers with uh, up to pico ampere input bias current. And uh, we have differential measurement after with this differential amplifier that sends the two uh, potential. Here, the unselective actual is uh, floating and uh, the reference electrode is grounded here. And after that, filtering and also before sampling to the ADC. Um, maybe I could mention a bit one word here. I mentioned temperature. The sensing principle is a bit different here. We, we monitor in situ temperature with resistal thermal devices. Um, it's a metal. That temperature is varying with the, the, the resistance of the, this device is varying with the temperature. So another kind of circuitry is implemented to do that. Basically, some resistor resistance measurement technique. I don't show it here, but if you have questions, I could ask you how to implement that in practice. But um, now I'll speak more about the applications, how to characterize these uh, harder front ends for different uh, sensing applications, metabolite sensing, such as lactate, drug sensing, and uh, ion sensing. So all these measurements, they are done in in vitro, in laboratory, not on the fields. And uh, we are using uh, commercial screen electrode because the sensor platform is not ready yet to be tested. So just for characterization, this is the setup used in the lab. The hardware is connected to the sensing platform and the, and the, the platform is uh, controlled remotely by a, a personal computer where MATLAB GUI is, is run on and collecting also the data uh, relayed by the sensor. So first, uh, lactate monitoring. 
I will I choose to monitor lactate as a metabolite, as an example. So to monitor that, we have to implement some enzymatic biosensor. Um, so here I choose the carbon screen-printed electrode that has been polished first with uh, sulfuric acid voltage scan, and then I just job casted uh, the enzyme lactate oxidase on top of the electrode, just job casting direct adsorption. And then the stancing principle is like that. We want to measure the uh, lactate, lithium lactate. So in presence of the enzyme, it catalyzes the production of pyruvate. But here, we use this mediator, like the, fer the ferrocen ferrocenium ferrocen mediator, that is a redox compound. And by applying this uh, potential to the cell, 250 millivolt against the reference electrode, we could have, we, we trigger this uh, redox reaction that allow us to monitor the, um, the transduction between the chemical reaction to the electric signal we measure at the back end of the sensor. So I skip it. So typical setup implemented for calibration of the sensor. So calibration, what is, what is the goal here? We need to know um, to make the correspondence between the current we are measuring and the concentration of the analyte we want to merge, we want to, we are detecting at the end. So this is done uh, in the, this in vitro application. So we are using uh, the screen printed electrode that has been coated with the enzyme. The reference electrode here is the silver silver chloride uh, double junction electrode. This one that has a stable potential and give like stable reference for the electrochemical measurements. And uh, this system is put in a phosphate buffer saline background electrolyte in presence of the mediator that allow this uh, redox reaction. Uh, I use it here a mag magnetic steerer. To for to allow convection and to avoid some division division limited process, um, and for the measurements I'm applying uh, a steady potential of 250 millivolt and I'm continuously monitoring the current. So calibration. So what we get uh, typically when we monitor continuously the current and we inject. Uh, successively, the, the lactate in the solution, we see the champ of current. Here we have a bit noisy data uh, because of this uh, convection also, the magnetic steerer. But we could see that we have uh, a linear behavior at low concentration between be, uh, below one millimolar. We have this linear uh, calibration curve and then saturation be because of saturation of the enzyme that cannot absorb more uh, lactate. And some uh, figure of merit here is to see the sensitivity, that is the slope of this um, of the, the calibration curve. Uh, that is uh, about one uh, micromolar per millimolar, one micro microampere sorry per millimolar. Sorry, I'm making a mistake here. And the second figure of merit is the limit of detection. In small words, it's the minimum amount of lactate we are able to measure the system. So this is well below the physiological typical concentration of lactate that we could find in the, in the sweat or in the blood or in the serum. So for comparison, uh, implement some measurement also the same setup with a commercial uh, electrochemical um, lab tool, the auto lab here. And I obtain uh, a bit lower limit of detection because I have lower background noise in the measurements but I have barely the same sensitivity as with the system I use, I develop. So a uh, second kind of um, biomarker I want to measure is drugs, paracetamol. I think I'll go a bit faster here. I'll just show you the um, results obtained. So for cyclic voltammetry, we scan this uh, potential to the cell and measure the current the, um, the Faraday current resulting to the concentration of the the, the APAP is the paracetamol in uh, over terms that we injected in solution. So we see here the linear increase of the the peak that is the oxidation peak when we inject more and more concentrated lactate in, uh, APAP in the solution. 
For differential principle telemetry, the same setup is done, but here in this case we have a more sensitive technique because uh, it's a differential measurement, and we, s we see this uh, linear behavior response of the sensor with more and more concentrated. This is just a comparison with the old collapse system, but I will skip it. Um, last kind of family of compounds I, was, I used for the characterization of the sensor is for ion sensing. So here is how we could functionalize the, the electrode, the sensor. We could use the nanostructures and the selective membrane, as I mentioned before. And the typical setup implemented here, also in vitro, in vitro measurement, we have the, uh, the sensing electrode here that is, uh, is done with a platinum uh, scrimpeted electrode, functionalized with the, with the membrane, selective membrane. And the reference selected here is the double junction silver silver chloride. So the measurements are done in water samples and we are monitoring the open circuit potential continuously. So what we could obtain here by doing calibration measurement, calibration, I place always the same setup. We increase the concentration of the ion we want to measure and you see how much uh, potential has increased. What is the potential corresponding to that concentration? So we see two regimes here, one flat regime, where the potential doesn't increase that much. And then after some threshold concentration, we see an ancient, the typical response of the sensor, if theoretically 60 millivolt per decade for monovalent ions, that represents the, the sensor response. So the sensitivity here is the slope of this uh, linear part of the curve that is a bit below the theoretical value, but still acceptable. And the second parameter important to, to see the performance of the sensor, the limit of detection, that is extrapolated as the intersection of the two curves here, but gives us insights about the smallest amount of uh, lithium we could measure with this system. So with this uh, concentration of micromolar, is still well below the typical range we are typically using. So the same setup is done with the, this commercial tool, lab tool, to see the performance. So here we have much higher sensitivity, but more, mostly the same limit of detection. So same characterization have been done with hover kind of ions. I'm not showing you the results here, but always the same setup, always the same calibration process. But I'll skip it. Uh, last part, if I have time. Uh, I'll give you a bit of insights about data processing tool that could be implemented. If you think about a multi-sensing paradigm where we want to monitor different kind of ions. So here I should introduce you the concepts of interference in multi-ion sensing. Um, maybe to have an insight about it, sweat composition, what is it made of? We have a lot of electrolytes, background electrolytes, like sodium, chloride, potassium, calcium. And if, for example, if you want to measure a typical ion like potassium, we, we have all these over interference that are injuring the response of the sensor. Whatever, we, we could increase the selectivity of the sensor, but we have some limitation. We cannot, um, we still have the, the interference of this uh, over ion that are changing the response of the sensor. So the two options here is either to develop more and more selective uh, sensor, ion sensor, or to work on efficient processing tools that allow to decouple um, the contribution of the over ions to the main ion we want to measure. So this is a bit the uh, spirit of this. We have a multi-sensing panel that allows to monitor many ions simultaneously. And also here is the resistances for temperature measurement. We couple that to analog front-end circuit that uh, translate, transduces this uh, concentration of, ana of uh, analyte ion to a um, value that could be processed, a digital value. And then in the back end, we could have a data processing tool that allows to give us in a, with a accuracy the concentration corresponding to each, the concentration of potassium, sodium, the compounds you want to measure at the end. 
Um, so here we have collected uh, many data, but uh, to be more exhaustive, uh, I developed some model. No, I, not de I didn't develop, but I was using some model that allow to generate some synthetic data um, that that are simulating a bit the behavior of this ion sensor in presence of this interference. So the model here is a bit, uh, we need a bit of background on analytical chemistry. I'll skip the steps here, but I'm just showing how uh, we could, uh, which equation we could use to, to develop this model. Um, so these are the typical uh, <laughs> response uh, potential <laughs> in presence of all these uh, ions. It's a bit complicated, maybe I'll skip it, but I'm just showing you that we have a nonlinear response function and um, we have many parameters that should be taken into account that plays a role in the, in the output of the sensor. So what I've developed here is a, uh, an emulator that allows to simulate and generate these data calibration curves. As I mentioned before, calibration curve, open circuit potential against concentration, and to see the influence of each of the ions, we could tune the activity, that is the concentration of the ions. Um, we could tune many parameters to see how they affect the, the response here of the sensor. Um, so what could be done for the calibration? Because every time when you have these ions, we need to, to know to have this calibration uh, information to see, to always be able to, to see how much OCP is related to the concentration of the analyte. And we could design some processing flow at the back end of the sensor that first will pre-process the data, like implement some averaging of this kind of uh, uh, processing tool, and then extract the main, the main components from the, this OCP. We could use some algorithms, some typically use principal uh, component analysis to extract um, the, the principal component from this data. And because we have a multidimensional problem here, so we should reduce the dimensionality of the problem. And some kind of regression technique at the end that could be implemented, we could think about uh, partial least care regression, at the end maybe artificial neural network that could be, that are suitable to deal with these nonlinear problems. But this is uh, ongoing research, and uh, there is still much more, much more work to, do, to be done on that. So that is for the presentation. Uh, if I have time, maybe two minutes. Uh, yeah, I will give, yeah, okay, very short. Insights about EPFL, maybe <laughs> you wonder what's going on up there. So EPFL is in Switzerland. Its main campus is located in Lausanne. We have several antennas all over. Switzerland, and this is an international university with up to 15,000 students with uh, many facilities here. Um, some facilities allow us for the researcher to have, uh, we could profit of them. For example, we have workshops where we could manufacture our own PCBs, we could uh, have manufacture flexible PCBs, implement some several uh, mechanical uh, Things. We have microscopy center. We also have a clean room, our own clean room, where we could fabricate these sentient platforms. These are kind of fancy images we could get from the clean room we have there. And, um, and also, uh, uh, speaking about my lab, what are the main activities we are carrying out there? Uh, most of the people there, they are working in logic synthesis. Um, like uh, implementing some new data structures and new algorithms to 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 to, uh, to applications for new uh, emerging technologies also uh, quantum computing system to um, more on quantum compilation uh, like uh, translation of these uh, quantum algorithms to circuits we also work on circuits and devices fabrication of new um, beyond CMOS uh, electronics with materials like, for example, 2D materials. And uh, the cluster for which I belong is biosensor and biomedical system. We are working there in the sensing interface, the biosensing interface, and also in the electronic front-end interfaces. 
um, that's what I'm dealing with. So uh, that's it. Uh, I thank you. I hope I was not too long, but I thank you for your attention and again for this invitation for this PhD uh, seminar. That is a good opportunity for us to to give you insights about our research work there.